underneath the water because they are impervious to water, just like they're impervious to gamma rays, cosmic rays, impervious to anything that gets in the way of their traveling in space. According to all information, we are dealing with a very advanced technology. They circle ships and the next thing you know, dive into the water. It's, it's, it's not a barrier to them. They just go from one medium to another. In late 1969, while conducting their regular Operation Deep Freeze icebreaking exercises near Antarctica, U.S. Navy sailors aboard the USS Calcaterra reportedly witness an unidentified submerged object with some extraordinary capabilities. Ivan Sanderson in Argosy magazine where he talks about an event somewhere in the Arctic when an object came up through the ice and took off, uh, really sort of burrowed its way through. A large submarine-shaped object at least 100 feet long is seen bursting out of the frozen ocean through several yards of solid ice at an incredible speed. But this case, however, is only one of many similar incidents reported by navies around the world. I know of one case that occurred near Leningrad. In the winter in 1976, a USL broke down through the ice, maneuvered underwater, and then again broke back out through the ice. They do melt ice. Now, if you had a meteor, the dynamics of the thing would break the ice into chunks and scatter them all over the place. With the UFO, it's a clean hole. USO witnesses have also reported seeing water spouts beneath USOs as they exit the water including Ed Walters, a resident of Gulf Breeze, Florida, who snapped this never-before-seen Polaroid picture of what appears to be a USO above a tornado-shaped water spout on July 7, 1988. So he was looking north towards Gulf Breeze across the Santa Rosa Sound, a distance of about 7,000 feet. He noticed that the water down beneath the object started to get all foamy or something. He could see it dancing around, and all of a sudden this column of water went up and contacted the bottom of it. The picture that he took actually shows that. Such cases have caused some experts to assert that USOs might possibly use water as a fuel source. There are those who feel that water is essential for the fusion process. There are a lot of cases where UFOs hover over reservoirs and small bodies of water, not only large bodies of water. It does seem to be some evidence that they can use water to help their craft in some way. They may use water as a fuel. Uh, in these cases where they talk about create objects hovering over the water and seeming to suck water up in, certainly sounds like uh, they need a big drink or something to keep, keep going. Modern scientific theories abound about how USOs developed the ability to propel themselves through water with great efficiency. Researchers envision everything from massive jet-like propulsion systems to frictionless bubbles that cocoon the objects. So the engines wouldn't be engines as you and I would imagine engines. They would be generators generating a magnetic force, creating a magnetic envelope around the craft that repels the Earth's natural magnetism, hence allowing them to accelerate, decelerate, climb, fall, and navigate through the water. By exerting forces at the surrounding fluid, seawater, nice electrically conducting fluid. You control the drag, you control the flow, the speed, the lift. You can get around all the problems of high speed motion under the water. A magneto aerodynamic system would work similar to the electromagnetic submarine that was successfully tested. An electromagnetic submarine was in fact built and tested by the University of California, Santa Barbara in the mid 1960s. It took advantage of saltwater's natural ability to conduct electricity. The first successful test of an electromagnetic propulsion system was conducted on Earth in 1966, when this electromagnetic submarine was first demonstrated. This electromagnetic submarine moves through the water as a result of electromagnetic forces. It has absolutely no moving parts. The principle here is that seawater is an electrically conducting fluid. You push against the seawater by Newton's laws, elementary physics, it pushes back, and off you go. Is it possible that USOs take advantage of this natural capability of our oceans to reach supersonic speed?
Water is a great magnetic conduit. In fact, if they were traveling using a process called diamagnetism, which is a weak repellent force, then water would enhance that force, which would explain why these craft are able to navigate in water so well. One researcher theorizes that USOs might move rapidly through the water and avoid catastrophic damage using the same principles as a common light bulb. UFO is the filament in this particular case, and the bulb is the field, and that protects the UFO. It keeps the water from coming onto it when it goes in. They move it, though, and it never touches the UFO. And that uh, can be achieved by creating so-called supercavitating bubble around the whole object. In that way, the uh, whole object travels together with a bubble of water vapor. Marco Princevac is a professor of mechanical engineering at the University of California, Riverside. He devised an experiment for the History Channel demonstrating the physics behind possible supersonic movement through the water. Basically, the only thing that you can play with is the shape of a vehicle. And it, 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 it will deviate from uh, standard shapes of a uh, submarine. To demonstrate how different shapes can produce the conditions for supersonic underwater travel, Princevac and his team force an underwater current, along with green dye and high-powered lasers, around different submersed objects. So if we have something called a streamlined body, we see that fluid uh, flows undisturbedly around that uh, body. This red streamlined object represents the perfect shape for a fast-moving underwater vessel. In direct contrast, the cube that is tested creates massive resistance all around the object. A good uh, shape for an uh, underwater supercavitating vehicle would be something similar to a return capsule of uh, Soyuz or other space missions. The laws of earthly physics change dramatically underwater. Propelling an oceanic vehicle to supersonic speeds requires an amount of power greater than what man has currently invented. A vehicle that has a five-foot diameter and we want to go at the speed of sound in, in the air, we would need an engine that can produce 15,000 horsepower. For the same vehicle to reach the speed of sound under the water, we would need an engine that can produce around one million horsepower. While it might be scientifically possible for USOs to prowl the oceans at supersonic speed, how have these craft developed the technology required to achieve this milestone? The many mysteries of these craft may never be fully understood, and that is exactly what provokes the greatest debate and distress among investigators and researchers. I think it's easier for us to land a man on the moon or even create a moon base and to land a man on the bottom of the ocean. If they're hostile and have come here to conquer Earth, they would have done it a million years ago. We might be their creations for all we know. The Earth is conquered, we work for them, they live here, this is their planet. Do the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah actually exist? Josh Bernstein is on an epic quest to find out. So there actually could have been a Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, I'm not back in five minutes. It's time to search for you. Digging for the truth, Sodom and Gomorrah, next on the History Channel. This way is much more fun.